You're probably wondering to yourself, hey, what's he doing driving without a license? To which I would reply, what are you, a cop? But to be more specific, there's a very good reason why I'm driving this Lamborghini down the interstate at a borderline criminal speed. See, word on the street is that a little document got leaked containing some interesting information. Information on a certain show us Thomas fans call the Hit Era. And as the good people of Twitter do, they angrily tweeted excerpts from it until it was pounded into a fine dust. Likewise, I figured it was only natural that I get my hands on this document and give it the old one-two as the kids might say. But then this upstanding citizen came along and beat me to the punch and made a video that, well, was actually pretty good. You should go watch it. But that's beside the point. It was clear that if I wanted to cover this piece of Thomas history, and more importantly, wipe my ass with it, I was gonna have to shake things up a bit. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a train to catch. Oh, and also this video is sponsored by Khaki. Thomas and Friends in Italics is a series of half hours of all new adventures about everyone's favorite Steam Team engine. This reads like a freaking children's YouTube title, plus three minute, that's a word I've never seen before, interstituals, all linked by a common theme. Now that's an interesting thing that I picked up on when I first uh, read it. It's, it says like three seven minute stories. So I'm guessing the original plan was to have uh, three series eight episodes in a segment separated by like songs and learning segments. But then when they realized, oh shit, we didn't do anything with season seven in the US. We've got to find it in somewhere. We've got to make some money. So we got to push out season seven as quickly and hastily as possible. This sounds like it was going to be like calling all engines the show where the learning segments and the story influence one another, which is kind of interesting having like three connected seven minute stories. That wouldn't be a terrible idea if it was done well. I feel like we're going to be saying that a lot throughout this reading. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Great ideas. They just weren't done that well. Sodor is an imaginary island created by Reverend W. Audrey, supposedly based upon the Isle of Man. On Sodor, trains are powered by steam and they talk. That's that sentence. It's an idealized world with a strong community ethos typified, who wrote this, by a universal willingness to help, good manners, and hard work. Sodor is unpronounceable to the world, <laughs> to a, the world a child might build around a set of train tracks. It has certain physical features such as Brendam Docks, Tidmouth Sheds, Gordon's Hill with it's like Gordon apostrophe S apostrophe. <laughs> Even Google Docs knows that's not right. The most important feature of Sodor is its railways. Yeah, no shit. Was this written by a fifth grader for other fifth graders to follow? Yeah, because one of the things, uh, I get a lot of essays on my university course related around uh, writing about uh, like specific shows. And one of the things you have to do, they always remind us, is if, is if you're presenting the show to an alien, someone who has no idea what the fuck you're talking about, uh, you basically have to explain it to them. So that will explain the very overly verbose and simplistic writing in this. It's to make sure everybody's on the same mindset. Dude, this sounds like it was written by an alien. And two, they're four, they're six, they're eight. The steam engines are like children in a playground. <laughs> when I first had a go at like reading this, I couldn't wince anymore. Though the engines are generally the same age, <laughs> there are differences in status based on small distinctions. It's clear that Gordon is older than Thomas, unless you follow the railway series. For instance, though he may only be six and a half to Thomas's six. Six and a half? Gordon's like four times Thomas's size. Whatever their age, all the steam engines are basically good natured and well behaved. That's not even right anyway. <laughs> Thomas loves being sent on specials. Percy loves taking the mail. Gordon's pride is strongly rooted in taking the express, etc. AKA, I can't be asked to list the others. So the engines never shirk, cut corners, or deliberately put anyone or anything at risk. Bull fucking shit. That's like all they do. <laughs> the first episode, Gordon's like, oh, Thomas has woke me up from my nap, so I'm gonna drag him behind the express all the way to frickin' Wellsworth. <laughs> Accidents happen, sometimes as a result of foolishness, but never malice, and always with a luckily no one was hurt added. Good behaviour and good intentions are always rewarded. Naughty behaviour has consequences, and it is naughty, not bad. 
If Gordon or James misbehaves, they are always reprimanded and they are always forgiven. The notion of redemption, not that we would ever use the word, it's a bit of an odd thing to put there, is important. No engine ever does or says anything that is not forgiven in the end because we can't be asked to write two-part stories. Whatever the story, lessons are learned. Humility and fairness triumphs and everyone is friends in again by bedtime. But wait, bedtime? You broadcasted this shit in the morning. At like six <laughs> o'clock. Gotta wake up to watch Pokemon and then this right afterwards. It was a whiplashing time to say the least. Steam engines only have two natural foes. Troublesome trucks, who are a nuisance to everyone, and diesels, except the good diesels. Uh, glad that they uh, clarified that. It's a safe and recognisable place where children would want to play, knowing that the engines are their friends. They say safe and recognisable place, but I'm fairly certain for the hit era specifically, 80% of the sets is trees. Well, there's nothing more recognisable than literally the same place. I mean... <laughs> Thomas. Thomas, a cheeky, friendly, and reliable engine, is our central character. He's a tank engine because he carries extra boiler water, boiler water, in tanks flanking his smoke box. Now you know. Thomas is our hero, our every engine, in quotes. Kind with a strong sense of right and wrong. I mean, that's one way to look at it. Thomas is also playful, unafraid of Gordon, Henry, or any of the larger engines, and is a very good friend to Percy. He has his own branch line with friends and coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, and is well-loved by his passengers. He does shunt trucks, but prefers passengers. Hates smelly work hauling fish, for example, and doesn't like his snowplow. Like most engines, he likes to keep his paint shiny and clean. Sir Topham Hat sends him on plenty of specials, yeah, every other day. Specials are an important part of Thomas and Friends storytelling. They're not only exciting to the engines and children, but also useful to the production as through them, we can introduce disparate elements easily. A jet engine, an opera singer, a red balloon, etc with limited exposition. So basically, we don't have to tell you why it's important. Edward. Edward is a frail and vulnerable engine. Oh, fuck, here we go. The same size and shape as James, but the same color blue as Gordon. Edward is a mainline engine with a coal tender at his rear. He pulls both trucks and smaller coaches and is often used as a back engine. Edward was the second engine on the island, number two. But unlike Gordon, age doesn't mean dominance. It means vulnerability. They make Edward sound like some 90-year-old man waiting to be dropped off at the home. We'll take him to the harbor and dump him in the sea. And you know what? It would have been a better fate than what he got in the show. <laughs> he has been picked on because his engine in not as powerful as the others. There's no way that they couldn't be that rushed to not proofread that. But smaller engines, especially Percy, like Edward and feel protective towards him. Like Henry, Edward is not as prominent as some of the other characters, but he shouldn't be overlooked. If a scene is set at the sheds, the likelihood is Henry and Edward are there, where possible and appropriate should be given a line. Yeah, fair. I mean, Edward does have some cool moments in season eight. Chickens to school is like one of the only times where he feels like Edward. And it's the worst episode of the series. <laughs> oh, I like that one though, because it's so stupid. I mean, if you look at it in that sense of like, maybe it, it, it could be like so bad it's good but you can never take anybody on that island seriously after how dumb they act towards Thomas being half asleep and delivering all that shit and then they still have a go at him for messing it up no you listen to me when I was fucking tired what do you mean you're tired you're an engine I'm fucking tired I've been out all night hauling your fucking coal trains on my eighth cup of coffee I need some sleep gosh dang it probably did all that shit out of spite Henry is a warrior. Gave me a sad feeling for the very first line. An engine hypochondriac who has to burn special coal. He's a little vain, but through insecurity, not because he thinks he's the best. Identical to Gordon, but a lively shade of green. Henry pulls freight, not the express. He's one of the bigger engines slash older children, but more modest and less prone to acting out than Gordon or James. He's also superstitious and easily spooked. Unless given his own episode, it's easy to overlook Henry, as he's not as visible as James, Percy, Gordon and Thomas, but Henry is nevertheless a key member of Tidmouth Sheds and should not be forgotten. Holy shit. Even back then, they were like, we don't know what to do with Henry. James, James is fabulously narcissistic. He's an all-purpose engine, which means he works both the main line and branch lines, pulling trucks and occasionally smaller coaches. 
inches. He's the same size as Edward, with a cold tender at the rear, which means he can't shunt. Incorrect. <laughs> In the playground, James comes somewhere between Thomas, Henry and Gordon. He's not vulnerable the way Percy is, but his undisguised vanity makes him open to teasing. Because he's selfish and narcissistic, the temptation to cast James in the baddie role, but he isn't bad. He just thinks he's special. Why would he be the only red engine on the island? But he's not. He often says something provocative that can help to emphasise the feeling part of a story, maybe criticising Percy's appearance, which is then later resolved by an apology or gentle reprimand. He's the closest thing to Thomas and Friends has to a rebel, capable of refusing to do things and showing off for the sake of it. I have a conspiracy theory here. Hit me. So, so far we've read words like hypochondriac used to describe Henry and James being a narcissist. Now, this Bible was only leaked out recently, but what if it was hidden from the general public for some time, but was only accessible to Thomas fans who looked very hard for, maybe they were writing character descriptions for YouTube. <laughs> and the earth is flat. Gordon, Gordon is pompous, self-satisfied, and large. He's a blue mainline engine with a coal tender identical to Henry, who pulls... The capital T express, I guess that's correct. He mimics adult behavior by not simply being vain, but by believing he isn't, thinking himself as important and responsible. Gordon's... What's this Gordon apostrophe S apostrophe shit again? Gordon's pomposity causes problems and is a good source for stories. As with James, matters are always resolved kindly and fairly. Gordon knows Sir Topham Hat is his boss, and like all the other engines, endeavors to be reliable and useful, providing the job is good enough. That's kind of Gordon a little bit. He's big, he's self-centered. He's wide. <laughs> Shunting trucks and oiling freight. Island locations. There's nothing interesting here. There's like Knapford Mainline Station. Wait, what the hell? What? Elsewhere is a coach shed, a small workshop. The fitter's yard is close by, as is a large smelting shed. What? What the <laughs> fuck? So Tom Matt puts that in, he's like, okay guys, if you screw up. You'd never send us in there. It's where I sent the marking engine. No, you didn't. Have you seen him around lately? Hey, wait a minute, what the fuck? What the hell? Godred the Impaler was based at Blacklock, a fantastically rugged and beautiful area. Godred the Impaler? Is that supposed to be like, uh, Dracula? Is that like, imagine telling your babies about Godred the Impaler. <laughs> Also featured many times nearby water towers and the washdown area, which is the engine's equivalent of the bathroom. It's like the train shitter. Got it. Having read that out loud about it like being like a comparison to a bathroom, it's like for the longest time I've always just seen all the washdown as oh yes, yeah, where the engines go to get washed. But now with the bathroom analogy, I've now just sort of realized that that's kind of like a public bathroom where the engines get washed on display. You want to bathe in public? Oh boy, do I go to like one of those. Those shitty like splash pads and just be like oh yes finally i can take a shower actually that reminds me of something this is completely off course and doesn't have anything to do with anything i would go camping with my dad somewhere for like inhuman amounts of time like three weeks which is too long to go camping in the same place you bring so much shit and you end up either not going through all of it or you under prepare and you are like well crap now i've got to go to the store and buy stuff so we'd go there and you can't go three weeks without having a shower. So they had showers in the campsite that we were at and you could go to those and you pay like a dollar and you get like four minutes in the shower or whatever. But my dad was like, you know what? <laughs> I can game the system here. And he bought this bag, which was supposed to be like a shower that you hang on a tree and it uses gravity to let you wash yourself. And then you use the heat from the sun to warm it up. So you're not like showering with cold water, which sounds good on paper, except none of it works. You fill it up with water. You're supposed to like let it rain. I think they just collect. First of all, you don't want to use rainwater in a shower. Birds could be flying around in there. There's leaves and stuff. You don't know what is in that bag until you turn on the thing. Second of all, relying on the rain for when you want to get clean is terrible. It could rain every day for a week. It could rain once the entire trip. So that doesn't work. So you'd have to like take it down, go fill it up with like a hose or something or in the bathroom, come back and then hang it up. Oh, well, at least it'll be warm because of the sun. No, it will not. Unless you've got like the sun right next to the frickin' bag, that water was ice cold. And it's also outside. 
so people are walking by and they can like see you through the trees showering that doesn't make you feel good (laughs) oh yeah i think i know what you're on about because i I do know about uh, the show top gear but it was the burma special and richard hammond uh, modified uh, like a shower in his lorry where where there was this uh, bag uh, that that he could like fill up with water and he like collected uh, rainwater from his roof with a bucket he'd pour it in and then he just like used that as a shower yeah it was literally as effective as washing with actual piss who wants to start on the education curriculum? Oh boy, let me add it. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> the new Thomas and Friends series provides many educational opportunities, with the primary and most obvious being trains. A wide range of concepts can be considered. Oh boy, I can't wait to learn about trains, like the colors of trains, counting the trains, vocabulary, language development, and telling time. All things that have to do with trains. Because trains are interesting, relevant, and meaningful to our audience, we can milk the shit out of it and make a ton of money (laughs) beyond the obvious theme of trains. The series will have an overriding theme, that of navigation, underlined. That's very important. Yeah, I'll delight it. Use it for a song later. Good to know your navigation. Literally, this theme will address the... Wait, literally? Map skills, directionality, problem solving. Luke, you know how to solve problems? Oh boy, do I. You got this show to thank for that. Follow directions, like when you see a stop sign, don't gun it into the intersection. (laughs) This theme of navigation. What is it with these guys in fucking navigation? Like they're constantly going on about geography and shit. Nobody cared. They didn't even care about like things connecting up to certain things. I watched all the hit era. I still couldn't find my way through Pokemon Yellow. This theme of navigation will focus on navigating through life. Which is interesting, considering that there's no map for life. But there is a map to get to 7-Eleven, so maybe you should teach me how to read that first. Such a shitty idea. Yeah, we'll use trains to frickin' teach kids directions. Yeah, you know, trains, the one mode of transportation that goes wherever it's told to go. It just follows the rails. At the end of the road, turn right. If you're an engine, fucking derail. Oh no! Oh, with different roles to play. Suggested episode topics. Introduction to the engines, individual differences, characteristics of each engine, parts of a train, whistle, wheels, vocabulary. What's a railway testicles? Track, bridge, tunnel, engines, caboose, railroad signs, RR crossing, stop sign, routines, schedules, locations around soda, other modes of transport, cars, bus, airplane, map skills, following directions, sequencing, positional words, over, under, in, on, through, emotions, happy, sad, angry, scared, problem solving, friendship, taking turns, cooperation, sharing, perseverance, patience, celebrations, birthdays, weather, rain, snow, wind, Sun, seasons of the year, nature, trees, water, flowers, rocks, healthy habits, exercise, cleanliness, opposites, big, little, empty, full, dirty, clean, wet, dry, open, shut, stop, go, fast, slow, primary colours, red, yellow, blue, secondary colours, orange, purple, green, geometric shape, circle, square, triangle, rectangle, ordinary numbers, counting and telling time. Themes that... (coughs) The opening part is in two parts. The first part starts with an overhead shot of the island of Sodor. We then get closer and closer until we dissolve through to an overhead shot of the island. Getting closer still, we focus on Thomas travelling along until we see the island from his point of view. They say um, we start with an overhead shot of the island, but they don't mention that the overhead shot of the island is very early 2000s CGI, and I mean, I feel like that's really important. The island of Sodor is from a PlayStation 2 engine. (laughs) It's really low res. The three stories are linked by interstitials. The interstitials range in length from 15 seconds to 1 minute and 30 seconds. No, that's 1 meter 30 inches. (laughs) Can you see what's going on? No, I can't see shit. (laughs) They support the theme and curriculum and should be as interactive as possible. Toot when you see Thomas. (sighs) <sighs> that sounds like they want the kids to fart when they see them. Remember kids, when you see Thomas, be sure to shit your fucking pants. <laughs> they can <laughs> they can use a variety of formats from a full-blown music video with a song to stills to live-action footage of real trains. The storyteller will lead the viewer through the activities presented in the interstitials. See, that's, a, that's another reason why I feel like the narration wasn't as good as it could have been in those eras, because not only did the narrators have to do longer episodes, but they also had to do the learning segments. This is the color red. Do you see the color red, little Timmy? 
Do you know what color salty is? Is it blue? No, you stupid fucking kid. It made me embarrassed to like the show because of the learning segments. It made me embarrassed to like it as a kid. Down the hills and round the bends. So, writing style guide. Ooh, I know how to write. I don't know how to read, but I can write. <laughs> how do I know what I'm writing? I don't know. How do I do the VO? I don't know. <laughs> The style notes contained here serve to reinforce the idea that this is a safe, gentle, and fun world for children. A world parents and caregivers can trust. The storytelling in Thomas and Friends is undo- oh fuck. Undulating. 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 This is the thing I never learned how to read. The stories are character-led, structured in three acts. So that's being a little too generous, but okay. At the beginning, there is the discovery moment, where the character's main goal is revealed. Soon, we come out to a crack in the track, where we find an obstacle to the goal. With the help of his or her friends, the main character then tackles the problem. And in the end, the resolution. He or she is pretty good, I guess. Two asterisks, stuff from presentation, end of sentence with no period. Thomas's stories are all about heart and soul. Caring, friendship, kindness, trying your best, never giving up, helping others, forgiving others, saying sorry, or if being naughty, then paying the price. There we go. That last one's the only one that's like consistent with the original classic series. Hey, if you screw up, you will hear about it for literally ever. Can you imagine if you lived in an environment where people were constantly reminding you of mistakes that you made like 10 to 20 years ago. Yeah, can you imagine? Thomas and his friends. Final thoughts? Uh, they misspelled rumors. Or maybe that's the British spelling of rumors. But, but then why would they spell it the British way if they were writing it mostly in American terminology? Because they had like, the American terminology for colour at one point. I'll give the Bible this. As depressing as it is to see their true intentions underneath the surface, you know, seeing they really were trying to make it as dumbed down to kids as possible. Everything that they did, every instruction that they had and wanted to get across is clearly written down on here. The geography, the characters, how they wanted to structure the episodes on TV. It's depressing to see how much they dumbed it down to kids' audiences, but everything is clear. As opposed to, oh, yeah, we'll just throw this bit at the wall and see what sticks. I don't know. So it's, it's good that they have everything planned in here, even if it doesn't necessarily work. Yeah, I agree. I think this document, despite being as phoned in content-wise as you can get, with very baseline, basic-ass research done for what should have been the next big step for Thomas, it is a plan, and most of what they wrote did materialize in Season 8. That being said, while reading this, I did find one line that I think perfectly sums up this entire fucking thing. If you don't care, you haven't got a story. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Get this shit out of my sight. Now, if there's one thing I can give the hit era, it's that character designs, ooh, they got some good ones. Dennis, Molly, Hank, those are some baller looking engines. Only problem is, is that Mattel doesn't care about them anymore. And the prices for them are exorbitant, to say the least. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. The reason I like Khaki so much is because, unlike eBay, who doesn't really care what price you put to anything, the stuff you find on Khaki is always relatively affordable. Nobody wants to spend over $100 on a piece of plastic, and thankfully, unless you're buying a lot, a lot of stuff, you'll never do that with Khaki. They're a great service, they're cheap, they're reliable, and they've always got new stuff coming in. And the best part is, if you use the code PDP12, you can save 12% off your order. So yeah, follow the link in the description, have a look around, and who knows, maybe you can make your own Hit Era episodes. Anyways, I want to say thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye